In another video, I included a short throwaway line about Diddy meeting Banjo during Donkey Kong Country 3. While on vacation in the Bear Country, that line could use some expanding, and could we possibly make sense of where the Donkey Kong franchise exists in relation to the Rareverse and Marioverse? It would make a lot of sense if Banjo was from the Bear Country considering how similar his design is to the other bears, and the fact his naming scheme matches perfectly. Every other bear has a defining characteristic of their character that starts with B, followed by Bear. Banjo actually is a skilled banjo player. His sister Tootie matches apart from her name not starting with a B. But maybe that is only culturally required for male bears. Isle of Hags may be a nearby island somewhere between the Donkey Kong Isle chain, Timbers Island, and the Bear Country. Or perhaps Timbers Island is an island on the Isle of Hags, since Tip Top seems to have ended up leaving his home of Timbers Island for the Isle of Hags. Conquer introduces a problem. Given that there are two very different Conquer continuities, one that stars the Conquer who up Diddy and Timber and then faced off against the evil Acorn and Honker in his unnamed homeland, and the alternate dystopian universe Conquer seen in Conquer's Bad Fur Day, who lived in the Panther Kingdom. The second universe is extremely unlikely to take place in the same universe as Banjo-Kazooie in the Donkey Kong Mario universe. Speaking of Mario, this is the last connection we have to make, and will also be a problematic connection. I'll get to that in a moment. First, I want to acknowledge the Donkey Kong Isle chain, including Crocodile Isle, Banana Fairy Island, the Fruit Kingdoms from Jungle Beat, and the nearby Sun Sun Islands as well as the Long Island trailing off from Donkey Kong Island. These all have similar habitats to the main DK Isle, which has seen two incarnations, meaning one may have been abandoned for a new Donkey Kong Island, or the shape may have changed due to natural phenomena, such as the volcano inside Donkey Kong Island erupting and eventually releasing the Tikis. This could understandably destroy the central rock the Kongs have sculpted to resemble their faces. Now to link to Mario. Mario actually made his first appearance on the unnamed island off the coast of Donkey Kong Island. Since it lacks a name, I'll call it part of Donkey Kong Island. I suppose we could even call the Donkey Kong Island chain the Donkey Kong Country. This island contains a location called Big Ape City, which is as it sounds, a large city close to Donkey Kong's home, which according to Rare Nintendo circa the SNES era is where the Donkey Kong arcade games took place. It looks like the Mushroom Kingdom did a little colonization, and Cranky Kong wasn't happy and kidnapped Pauline. It would even fit freakishly well for the Game Boy Donkey Kong to take place here considering further inland, on this island are forests, cliff faces, jungles, and beach ships. This seems pretty straightforward, even more so than the arcade games taking place in America. But then we have Mario vs Donkey Kong, and the many sequels. This includes Mario and the third Donkey Kong, his friend, fighting over toys and instead of living in a treehouse, Donkey Kong lives in a city. Perhaps Big Ape City, or somewhere in the Mushroom Kingdom. The other Kongs are also completely absent. Time and again the third Donkey Kong kidnaps Pauline over toys. And when Mario gets her back, there doesn't seem to be any animosity. Yet this same Donkey Kong races, parties, and plays sports with Mario alongside his fellow Kongs. It seems like an inconsistency of continuity and portrayal. This is all plausible to work. Donkey Kong could have a vacation home in Big Ape City, and could have some impulse problems occasionally or, maybe like I suggested, partially jesting. Mario vs Donkey Kong is an act put on like Super Mario Bros. 3. Maybe Mario is making a film to help sell his new toy line, or maybe it is a ploy to get Pauline out of her dress to serve him. If this is true, it begs many questions. Like what has been a movie, or perhaps what hasn't. The arcade games were made to pay homage to King Kong. Could they have been films Mario and Cranky were chosen to star in? Could the third Donkey Kong's adventures all be stories they act out? Donkey Kong Land specifically was a dramatization of Donkey Kong Country, orchestrated by Cranky Kong to prove Donkey Kong couldn't really beat K. Rule. Why would the Kremlings and DK go along with this rematch or refilm of the same plotline? if they weren't actors Cranky was directing. Is the Donkey Kong Island redesign actually the consequence of Donkey Kong's film franchise being rebooted like so many blockbusters? It would also explain every minute tonal difference between Mario, Donkey Kong, Banjo, and Conker. Each one is its own film franchise, and they frequently cross over because they are made by the same studio in the Mushroom World. 
Banjo is a film series known for its meta, self-aware gags. Konka received the gritty reboot after his initial film bombed. Is it possible none of these games in the far extended Mario-verse are anything more than filmed entertainment? Mario Kart and the sports games being televised events starring the famous actors of the mushroom world? And Mario Party being a Japanese style game show starring these actors? Explaining why yesterday's biggest stars are dropped for the new supporting actors. Video games about actors playing a part in a movie or sporting event. It would explain a lot, and I think when Mario Bros. 3 was confirmed to be an act, we all feared it could mean Lakitu wasn't a news cameraman, and none of these games happen in the fictional universe. They are really fiction within the fictional universe too. What do you think? Do you agree it is possible Mario, Donkey Kong, Banjo, and Conker are just actors in their fictional universe? Nothing is real? Everything is acted? If this is true, it is going to make video game, hypothesists, heads hurt.